can kind of start just publicly start our conversation about MFTE sure. um, so that it's in a public forum. And then um, and then at the next meeting, Mike, if we could have that as an agenda item, hopefully Eric will be able to join the discussion. Well, and what would you like? You know, I guess the question is, what are you asking from the administration to deliver or is it just a committee topic? You know, I think we can just make it a committee topic. I think that what we can do, what Jeff and I can do and, and Eric is we can look at the past presentation. We don't need yeah. to have somebody come back and rehash old business that they already spent a lot of time bringing to us. So Perfect. let's, let's yeah, let's do that. Um, and so Jeff, do you want to, I know that you have, uh, we talked briefly, but uh, we want to talk publicly about it. Um, talk to me about your uh, understanding or your feelings about the MFT proposal. Sure. And I went back to the, the PowerPoint slide that was uh, sent out to all the council um, last time this came up, I think about a month ago. Um, and there are there are four items that were laid out, one, two, three, four, and they were kind of from the, uh, the number one, had the most agreement, the four, probably the least agreement. So uh, one and two, I believe, were the, my understanding was council was uh, pretty much all aligned on, and that was to enable the 20 year MFTE that's new from the state. Um, that's a new, we've only had the eight and 12, but now there's a 20 year option. So it was to enable that 20 plus allowing 12 years to convert to the 20 if they meet the requirements. I, I believe there was no opposition to that. And personally, I think that's great to put on the books. Um, the other item was, uh, I believe providing for um, relocation assistance. Um, and I forget all the exact details, but it was kind of first and last month's um, rent and, and then helping people find a new place. So um, again, I had no opposition to that personally. And I think there was overall a broad agreement for it. Um, it's possible some people might want to get in the details of, you know, both months or one month, but uh, I, I was happy with it as is. So then we got into three and four and I didn't write that. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So three was adjusting the 12 year income from where it, where it currently sits, um, more toward the median income or just below median to a lower threshold. Um, and I went back and refreshed on that argument. And that was where I lost, last, or last left that off. And my thinking was at council, we had a discussion of wondering if dropping that threshold would make it so that the, the people developing the buildings wouldn't, wouldn't use it anymore that we saw that the 12 year wasn't used very often already. And the worry uh, among some of us was if you, if you drop the income for the afford the 20% affordable units, then for the developers, it'll no longer pencil out and that they're not really making their, the tax savings that they're getting from the MFTE is, is not as much as the money they're losing by not being able to put it at market rate. And so I had, done a back of the envelope calculation using some of the publicly available data for I believe it was the 606 apartment project. Um, and my calculation kind of showed that indeed at current levels it pencils out, um, the developer would save some money. Um, but if you enacted the new income levels, then they're actually losing money on the project and it's no longer feasible to build. So that's where I left, last left off. If I see data, um, if I see data that contradicts that, I'm happy to change my mind, but the only data I have is what I personally, you know, crunched through. And that to me shows that if we did that change to the 12 year, I don't think it would get used. We'd have less affordable housing. So I currently would not support that change. Um, and then number four was, uh, I believe the proposal on the table was to completely remove the eight year MFTE. I have similar concerns on that one. It, it was enacted, I mean, by the state as an option to promote affordable housing, right? It is market rate, but the idea being the more housing you get out there, the more prices drop. I believe I proposed I'd be fine with putting, an, with, with putting an income on it. I think a lot of the community hesitation on it was that the eight year, there was a perception that it's going towards higher end, um, call it luxury apartments, condos. Um, I don't currently see the data supporting that but I would have been happy putting an income restriction on it and say, okay, let, let's, let's put an upper income of 20% you know, above the median, somewhere in there that, that really defines it as market rate. Um, I believe a problem there um, that I've heard from talking to some folks is that that would place too high a burden on the city staff to, to track it. 
um, because there's so many that use the eight year exemption. So that's my current understanding. Um, so I'm not, I would currently lean towards not getting rid of the eight year. I think it's still doing good um, and actually creating affordable housing from, from what I've seen. I would consider that income limit change, but I don't, uh, it doesn't sound like that's a feasible option. Uh, right now it's black or white, keep it or keep it or get rid of it. So if those are the two options, I would, I would lean towards keeping it at the moment. Thank you. And so, I, you know, and I've done some research too on this and, um, you know, there's no easy solution for affordable housing uh, for the houselessness crisis we have. What I do uh, have some research on is that there's really no proof um, that rents will lower or stabilize when more housing is enacted. In fact, it goes the other way that rents continue to increase. Um, in communities where, uh, you know, where more housing is, is built. And so um, if you were to, if you were to come to me and tell me like, yes, you know, like if we, uh, you know, um, uh, we have more housing that'll, that rents will stabilize or maybe even lower because that's the, the concept, the concept is, you know, free market, right? But like, this is capitalist, we're in a capitalist society. And there's just no data that I can put. I am open to data showing that rents do stabilize or lower when more housing comes up in communities. So uh, we have those two sides, right? And so that's why this issue got super sticky um, and why I think we need to have a, a discussion amongst the three of us um, to try to find some consensus and also not bring any additional burden to administration for having to have a code that they just don't have capacity to enforce. So I appreciate, Jeff, that you've done that legwork to talk to Andrea about um, what, you know, DCD has capacity to implement, right? Um, I, um, I'd i like to see your numbers, like how you rough penciled it out. Did you do that at, at a meeting at some point in time you presented it, or do you just have it on the back of an envelope there sitting in front of you? No, I, I wrote it up formally and sent it out to council and uh, mayor. So it should, okay. be, it should be the email. And I, I do remember that. If you have, if you might be able to, to forward that to me again, so it's at the top of my stack. Sure. I remember you sent that out. That'd be great. So I could look at that again. Um, but I, um, you know, I mean, and that leads me into my next topic, which was the read the 350K that, that you presented in that white paper that you sent us, Mike. Um, I mean, if, if council doesn't approve this change to the MFTE, um, which I'm not sure where we're going to lean towards. I, I, that's why we, the three of us need to try, kind of come to a consensus on it because we're all representing three different value systems, I think. And, and I think we represent a good, I think we represent the voices of council as far as the variety of, where we're, of our lenses. But um, if we make no changes to MFTE, we've got to have some kind of solution. So I'm, I was, I guess I was just, you know, we're already implementing home funds, the CDBG, we're doing, I don't know what we can do with that for affordable housing. I have no idea what the projects that we can implement from the, the new legislation um, for the 350 and REIT. So can you talk to me a little bit about REIT um, and how we can possibly use that, those funds for affordable housing programs? Oh, you're muted, my friend. Uh, that's a good question. I think, you know, looking into the statute and freeing up those funds for, you know, things that are eligible for affordable housing, and we're doing some of those things of rental assistance, you can build, you can, you know, build projects, you can build tiny homes, you can do all the things I think that every, the council's aware of, but what, what funding is actually going to get, get that done. Um, so um, it, it really, that, that legislation that changed gave you a, uh, a source of those refunds at a cap. And that was the dollars that we you know, kind of delivered at three hundred fifty thousand dollars up to, and what can that really do for the city, and what can we what can we utilize that for? So um, I don't know what else I can can offer. Just, I think you, I think the council has good, you know, a good idea yeah. so as the administration on how to utilize those funds the best value of the dollar. So I wondered if you ever if you have if you've had discussion with the mayor yet about ideas for how. I mean, I guess um, are these REIT funds already allocated? They're not uh, really. A, so there's a good question. That's a great question. I think earlier tonight you heard a $1.1 million overrun on, on, on a project. So those refunds, I would say, are, are essential to the current existing uh, structure that we're operating under. Um, if we've got a project that has additional needs, that has cost overruns, and we want to finish that project, REIT Capital is our project. source of revenue. REIT is our source of revenue to fund that gap. Tonight, we tried to go a different direction with other restricted funding. 
Um, so I think those are valuable dollars where we don't know where we're going to be in 12 to 18 months with the recession hitting to be able to finish the, the projects we've already committed to. So I think working through, the, we're still gathering data from the departments. The budgets aren't due until tomorrow or Thursday, I believe it's Thursday, coming back from the proposals from each department. Then we set up a, a series of meetings with the mayor, uh, figure out looking at the council's goals and priorities, looking at the mayor's goals and initiatives and how we build this budget to propose uh, to be delivered in October to the council. Um, I will tell you those dollars are gonna be allocated in some manner um, toward match projects, uh, fun, you know, funding gaps. Um, so uh, as far as new initiatives, affordable housing, haven't heard anything new you know, right. from council, from the mayor. Uh, we have established programs. We have the rental assistance program. We are uh, building the affordable housing fund for available funding. Um, those things are all still there. We have some great initiatives that are in place. Uh, something, anything new, I haven't heard that yet. We will meet with the mayor and, and some new ideas. There's some other proposals outside of yeah. affordable housing that we've been talking about as well, EDI. Um, so a lot of different programs and things that are coming, but we're still we're still pretty far away from putting that all together and having a package it, to deliver. So I think it that the community um, has been, you know, there's a lot of community asks, but this is a big community ask is to help with the houselessness crisis mm -hmm. and affordable housing. Um, Jeff, I don't know where you sit with this. I, I and I and I don't know if 350k is really it's. It's not that much out of the REIT funds, is it? I mean, not to say that we would use that entire capacity for affordable housing, but how much of the percentage of our um, projected REIT funds would that be for next year? That's well, hard I'd to say. Run, I'd, yeah, I'd have to run what, what we're calculating. I think we're at $2 million for projected revenue uh, in okay. REIT. So you can, you can do the math, you know, what, what that looks like. So, um, so about 15%. I mean, I'm just mm -hmm. spitballing it. Um, mm -hmm. If 15% of our REIT funds were allocated for affordable housing options, I think that the optics on that would be amazing um, for uh, the requests of the community, whether it's they're complaining about houselessness or they're, you know, or they want more resources for it. Um, and there's uh, a need. Yeah. So, I mean, not to say we have to recreate the will, there's other programs mm -hmm. that we can put it towards. Exactly. And and that, and to, yeah. yeah. And that's what I would ask that as we build the budget, um, you know, our job is to show you here's the here's the consequences of either like the pros, the cons um, is to have a, what, what do we want to use the, the funds for? Uh, we want to maximize our dollars. So any program that we're trying to fund, we're looking, OK, what's the deliverable? And so do we uh, re reinforce a program we already have in place? So like rental assistance, the rental assistance program, we've got there's HUD CARES funds that went into that our own hundred thousand dollars that go into it. The BHA's match that goes in that program, and also an, uh, an allocated portion of the ARPA funds was half a million dollars to fund in that program. We're still trying to get feedback of okay, where's their capacity? What are we seeing in that program? And so, at what point have you hit your kind of? I don't want to use you know critical mass of funding that program, but you fund it more. Is there is there more need there still? So maybe that's where right. these funds can go toward, or is it something else? Is it and well, so? What we know is that, you know, uh, sometimes, you know, what we know is that I believe it was $5 million in vouchers are going unused because landlords aren't accepting them. Um, exactly. So programs like that, we wouldn't want to no. just for optics put money towards, right? So what's functioning, what's working. My preference, this is my personal preference, um, is that we find, uh, you know, secular resources that can assist, you know, the BHA, you know, mm -hmm. resources within our, our community structured resources that are working, that are at capacity, that ha do not, that, can't, that have a wait list, that need, you know, there's, there's people, you know, that, that are on the wait list that can't get the funding for things that they can actually put into practical use. Um, some of the, you know, uh, rental assistance and weatherization and things like that. So where can we beef that up while we have this temporary legislation in place? Yeah. Is my, is my yeah. thought. I don't know. And those things internally are at work. So we, we have partnerships like Community Frameworks and Home right. Builders. And oh, Community Frameworks would be amazing. We've partnered, uh, with, we've, we've partnered with them historically, We KCR. So all those things are in the work. So that is in the budget. That is part of the budget development is where can, where's the need? Where are we hearing from our partners? Are they asking for resources? You know, last year we were able to pivot during our CBG uh, discussions and be able to say, hey, we can fund this whole program request because we have ARPA dollars available that is eligible for these three programs, not all of them, but these three, so we can fund. So we're, we're always doing that. And so now we have resources that maybe have freed up. We have to look at that potential need, what we're taking away from or what we're giving. So that is that is what we're doing right now. So the proposal that will come to you will, 
I mean, hopefully we, you know, we all try to think of everything that's coming our way. And then we propose what we believe is a balanced budget that meets the initiatives of council and the mayor. And then at deliberation time is when we go, you know, I really have, I heard about this. This is what I really like to fund. Mm -hmm. And we look for those opportunities. Okay. If I fund this, what goes away? Because at the end of the day, we're bringing something we believe doesn't have any more real wiggle room. We provide for recession. We try to recession proof the, the budget a little bit. We want to maximize the dollars for the output to our community. We don't want to be sitting on money just to sit on money. We want to make sure it's going back to the community, back to our residents. So that's going to be the proposal and budget. Uh, and I know we're going to sit down, uh, 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 Karen, myself, and you, and uh, Councilman Fry have a great discussion. We met with Jeff um, recently. I thought it was a really, really uh, robust discussion. Oh, you're Not frozen. just about things like that. Oh, let no, me go back, back in my You're background. back. You were frozen for a okay. minute. You're good. Okay. Yeah, probably. Yeah, you know, we, need to do. we need to have a, and, and I do want to get that on the books. I know I yes. left you a message. And so just, uh, if you could hit me back up with um, time, sorry, I was um, in Winslow, Arizona, literally no, on a corner no in problem. Winslow, Arizona on Monday. No problem. No problem. So anytime you want me, I thought it was an invaluable meeting with Jeff. And also we, you know, I've also met with uh, Councilmember Member Mockler. We, it, it was a very wide discussion of how the budget kind of works and what we're trying to do and, and what will come to you in the fall and how you can have impact. And the more we funnel like ideas into the proposed budget is through like uh, the council president then into the mayor and say, hey, that sounds like a good idea. You know, we've talked about a diversity uh, director or a consultant and that's already, yeah, that's already, in the works. that it's yeah. in the works. You saw an email. That's how those things kind of make it in the proposed budget. And at the end of the day, council has to say, okay, we only have so many tokens where do we put them all? Of course, and that's, that's yes. what happened. And that's what happens. So these are all great ideas. Oh, I, I no, know I know. Me. Yeah. So and we I, all love to fund them all. So, yeah. And I've worked on a few budgets in the past, nothing like near this scale. <laughs> so it was just a federal grant program that I worked with for seven years. And so, you know, I get that they've never seen, and not to mention the restrictions on sources of funding. Yes. You can't, you know, you can't just fix every pothole in Breverton uh, yes. with every dollar. But it would be nice. I know, but a couple last minute questions and then um I, and then i want to retire this meeting because i am this mister has really held up its own it's misting me just great but once i move out of this circumference i'm i'm sweltering um i wanted to kind of check in I, something that somebody had mentioned is that there wasn't a lot I know, and i know that ter tertiarily is that a word i just said it we're gonna we're gonna make it a word that there were other affordable housing um, allocations within the budget. When it came to affordable housing, there was only a, there was a small line item, and so I guess um, uh, and just knowing how robust our um, basically, you know, we put a lot of wording into the affordable housing line item for our goals and, pri and priorities, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I just want to make sure that we're delivering something to the community that honors our goals and priorities and the asks from the community to assist people who, you know, vulnerable folks. And my hope is, of course, that that's balanced out with the funding for the Arts Commission, but not so much that it looks like we're just giving a bunch of money to arts and not to the people that need it the most in our, that yeah. are vulnerable. You know what I mean? No, and that's obvious. That's, that's not something I probably didn't even need to say to you because you're a professional. So... <laughs> And, right. and, the, and to quick respond on the, you know, because we're kind of on the record here, there is a little bit of a misnomer in our funding structure. So you see an affordable housing fund. And I think, right. I think uh, if, if I was a community member, I'd think, oh, that's all their money for affordable housing. Right. It's not. Right. That is an affordable yeah. housing capital fund dedicated from a source of revenue through the MFTE program that is just sit there to fund the bucket of money. It's very, it's not a large, large amount of money. No. Our, so the level of effort in the Bremerton budget is not seventy five thousand dollars. It's not a hundred thousand dollars. In in the last in the last year, you're probably it's over a million dollars with the HUD cares funds, with the city commitment, with the matching grants, and that's not even including weatherization. That's not including some of those other programs we fund through CBG. So the level of effort there is a seven figure number, not a seventy five thousand dollar number. But understandably, it's a little bit. It's hard to get to that number if you read the budget from an outside perspective. Right. Because it's not that granular level, but a lot of it lives in CBG. A lot of it lives in non-departmental. So it's just uh, it's just that one fund is a little bit confusing. Um, and we'll try to make sure we have good, you know, good conversations in the budget process about that. And we have a good spotlight on what our, what our commitments are um, to the to the community with the affordable housing uh, crisis that we're under. Yeah.
at community frameworks would be an awesome place mm -hmm. uh, anyway lots of lots of great ideas i'm sure you'll create uh you'll propose something that is uh very balanced and addresses all that uh i would like to end this meeting jeff do you have anything else you want to add yeah he's i'm sorry no, i didn't i just, I just ignored thanks. you through all that i apologize <laughs> no. um, i let you um, have parking i took the other business all right that works turn. too yeah no no i, I just oh, want to say th thanks for the um the affordable housing funding options pdf that you sent mike i don't know a bunch of staff worked on too um i read through that whole thing uh, before the meeting and it was uh super helpful i I, I have one or two questions. Okay, I'll just email you on them. I think you answered them. Just reach out, email, okay. call me, whatever you okay, want to do. Is follow me. Sounds good. No, but it was super helpful. So, no, thanks. To, thanks to you all. Oh, that was it. Oh, That's it. awesome. Got the rest. Okay, then um, I am adjourning this meeting. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I sure do appreciate you. Uh, yeah, thank <laughs> you very much. And, and Jennifer, just reach out. Let me know when you want to meet. We're, we're open. Thank you. Just yeah, just uh, send me a, send me an email. Actually, my yeah. iPad isn't even working right now. But I'll, I'll, pin, I'll, pin, I'll pin you in the morning and just let me know whenever you get a chance. And yeah, tell me before be. I go on vacation. So. Oh, when are you going on vacation? I've got a few weeks. I've got uh, okay. heading down to the Oregon coast on the, looks like the uh, week of the uh, 8th. We can okay. eat them back the 16th. Well, I would love to get in on a, you know, day when Karen's in Monday or Wednesday as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And so hit me up and we'll figure it out. And I appreciate you. Everybody have a wonderful rest of your day. Stay cool, hydrate, eat ice cream. Thanks Bye. All. <laughs>